Good day and welcome back. Thanks for joining me for Go Programming. Now this is going to be the first video um, where we can actually start talking about a language and not doing setup. But before we get too far into the language and start looking at the syntax and structure of a Go program and how you compile it and so on, we should at least get some idea where the language came from, the motivation behind the language, who created it, why, and maybe why you should learn it. So we're going to cover those things first. So this is going to be a very short video but I promise we're gonna get into the code soon. Meet the Go mascot. Now I don't know his actual name, I think they call him just Gopher, but yes, this is a Gopher and this is the Go mascot and you will see him just about everywhere. Um, if you look up Go, Go Lang, you look at presentation, he's there. In different shape, doing different things. I like this one because it looks like he's ready to do stuff for you and he's just like listening and just trying. So having a mascot is all fun and games, but Go was developed by some very serious people and from some very serious work. So if you go to the golang.org website, this is what it says at the top about Go. It says Go is an open source programming language that makes it easy to build simple, reliable, and efficient software. Well, those three things are very important. Simple, reliable, and efficient. You don't want to be able to build simple software that's not reliable or efficient. You can certainly do that with a number of scripting languages. Python come to mind. Sorry, Python people, but you can build um, applications very simply and they're not very reliable um, and not at a very large scale anyway. And certainly not efficient, they are very slow. So uh, you can disagree with that, but all interpreted language is gonna have pretty much some of the same um, deficiencies. And so who developed Go? Um, well, if you look at Wikipedia, it gives you some more details. It says Go, often referred to as Golang, is an open source language, so nobody really controls it, but yes and no, as you'll see. Programming language created at Google in 2007 by these fine folks, Robert Greshamer, Robert Pike, Rob Pike, and Ken Thompson. Now, Robert, Rob Pike and Ken Thompson, for some people who've been in the C world and Unix world for a while, and if you've heard of Pan9, but basically Unix and SeaWorld, you know those names. So these are guys who've been around like at at t Labs in very early days of C and Unix. And so they went over to um, Google and they decided to do this language because Google's running a lot of code on their server. It mostly a lot of it was written in C++. It's taken a lot of time to compile and so on. Um, they were plagued by different kind of issues, you know, with C++. Um, by the way, all languages are going to have issues, but some languages are just easier to shoot yourself in the foot. Um, assembly, C, C++, those are languages that really give you a lot of power. They're fast, but if you're not really skilled in a language, you can do some really bad things. And so they felt that for Google, doing a lot of server applications, they, it might be a better, there might be a better way. And Java didn't seem like the language to cut it for them. And so they decided to develop this new language. And you're going to see that some of the things that are in this language, um, they've met that goal of making a language as simple, reliable, and efficient. And I'd even put in there fun and all these other things that we're going to cover later. Now, the other thing here is it says it's a compiled language. Again, not a, it's very different from like Python or some of the language, um, interpretive language um, that you know, just interpret it, that you don't have to compile, you could just kind of write it and run it. Though you're gonna see that you can do certain things with Go, with its Go tool, that make it look like if it's a scripting language. Uh, but anyway, it's a compiled language, just like C, C++, and even Java. Before you can run it, it has to be compiled. And so you're gonna get um, pretty much warning about any serious syntax, or any syntactical error to that, for that matter, before you can even run the code. Statically typed. That refers to the fact that your variables at um, runtime um, or at compile time needs to be resolved. So they don't even have runtime, but at compile time, um, it doesn't have dynamic typing like um, Python or some of the other languages. Um, you know, it, you have to know your type um, at the time that your program is compiled. And it's not like Groovy, for example, where you can have a variable that changes type. No, that doesn't happen. Here. It's static. A is of type int and will always be of type int. It's never ever gonna change to a run of that program to a string or something else. And it says the language in the tradition of algo and C.
or the C part of this is really interesting. And for a number of reasons. One, not, in, not only in O, the language look very similar to C, just as the same as Java is in the family of C language, C++ is in the family of C language, and a whole host of other languages that came after C that tried to take the structure of C. That is not the only thing that Go has going for it, is the structure, the look of C, but also the intent. C has been the, I want to say, conical, go-to system programming language, embedded programming language. And just as C++ tried to follow in that vein and try to replace C where it could as a system programming language, Java never really tried to be a system programming language, but um, C++ certainly did and is a system programming language. Go intention is to be the system programming language just as C and C++ um, are and to fit in in many of the places where you use C and C++. There are very few places that you probably wouldn't want to go, use Go. So far, no one has, has tried to write an operating system in Go yet, but we're not going to get into that too much, but uh, that's probably the one place that you may not see people push in Go. But certainly in just about everything else that you can do with system programming, that's where we want to be thinking of how to use Go. Don't worry about the C thing. If you, you don't know any computer language, don't worry about it. This Go, learning Go doesn't require you to know C. And if you program but you still don't know C or whatever, don't worry about the whole C thing. The other thing is garbage collected. Um, Go is a modern programming language and they didn't want to go back to forcing all this managing your memory on you that you do in C and C++. That's one of the sources for a lot of issues in those languages, C, assembly, and C++, is people run into issues with managing memory. So Go went the path of like Java with having garbage collection. The big difference is in how Go manages garbage um, your memory than in Java, and um, Go is actually pretty good at it. And we're going to probably get to see some of that stuff. Um, limited structure typing. I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but you'll see that um, it's not like C++ in terms of having a very a big type hierarchy. Uh, memory safety feature, again, that comes back to the garbage collection and so on. And CSP style concurrent programming feature added. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this now, but basically what CSP means is communicating sequential processes. So imagine that each one of these gopher is a process and it's doing some work but they need to communicate with each other. And so CSP, um, as it, the way it's implemented in Go, Go, using channels, which we will learn a whole lot about, is the way which you link processes um, together. And even though they run sequentially, it makes it very easy to reason about. And even if they run in parallel, uh, it makes it um, easy to reason about. So we'll get, see all this when we get into the language. It's features like CSP and Go, Go that makes it fun and easy to write reliable and efficient software because in other languages it'd be very difficult to reason or write um, correct concurrent applications but Go make this very um, uh, approachable for most people, uh, just about everyone. Uh, the other thing is the language was announced and released in 2009 to the public and um, like it said earlier it's open source but it's kind of controlled by Google you, anyone can contribute to the language and so on, but you know, your change is going to be submitted and it's going to get reviewed and so on. Um, features that go into the language gets decided by those three guys who design the language, so you just can't come up and put in your own wacky feature. They're just not going to allow it. And it runs on a number of platforms, and that's important because it's not this language that's just for this platform, like you know, Linux alone or whatever. And I'll show you something really cool how easy it is for you to make an executable run on just any one of the supported platform, even if you don't have access to that platform. So for example, I'm going to write code on my Mac, but I can, I can make an executable file for Windows or Linux or some other platform very, very easily on my Mac computer without installing any additional tool. Are you going to see that? So some of those points about the language and where it came from and the purpose of it are all good and great and everything and anybody can tell you their language is fun or some language they think is fun. But why should you learn Go? So here's some of my reasons I think you should learn Go. Um, the first two are kind of like a joke, you know, it's great at the next gig party or whatever and 
because it's relatively new, if you kind of bring up Go, pretty much very few people are likely to know it. So it'd be a great way to start a conversation. Um, and yes, it's one of the new coolest thing in town and people like new shiny things. But say more seriously, job security. If you already have a job as a programmer, um, this is one way in which you can learn a new skill as a developer and either move, change, um, look for new opportunities at another company or at your existing company, um, give some life into those um, old projects or even make um, the things you're doing faster and more efficient. And once you start learning this language, you're going to see that some of the things that you used to think about doing just become so much easier to do now. Um, if you're not in the job market yet or not a programmer yet or something, this is certainly one nice way to get in because, again, a lot of companies is lo are looking at this language and you being one of those individuals with this new s tool set or set of skills um, certainly get you looked at. And like I say, it's really fun to program in this language regardless if you you know, think about job security or not. Um, also, every programming language kind of give you a different way of thinking and there's no difference with Go and it's true of other languages also. And um, like I said before, it makes a lot of very difficult things approachable. So I think that it really is in the best interest of anyone who's interested in programming to look at new tools to see what um, new set of things they're making easier. As people continue to program, they're learning tricks and so on, and they certainly make that available in new languages. And Go is no different. They've certainly put a lot of thought into making a lot of things approachable in the language. So it might be in your best interest to look at that. If you're looking for a new language to try, I certainly recommend Go, even as a first language. I think Go is much easier and smaller than, let's say, Java and Scala, and I have the books to prove it. But that's not to knock on those languages. I'm just saying if you're looking for a language to start learning, Go is small enough and fun and so on, and you can do things with it. That is a good place to start. Okay, so we're at the end of this video now. And those are some of the reasons why I want to learn this. I wanted to learn this language and why I want to teach you this language. But you have to decide. I hope you'll join me and stick with me. Um, you're here already. So thank you. And I um, look forward to seeing you in the very next video where we're going to start writing some code. Take care. Goodbye. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. See you.